Is this thing on? Can you believe I'm pumping out all these videos? How lucky are you to be witnessing the rise of the great yam? Yeah, just kidding, I really don't think that highly of myself. Now, hello, how's it going? I hope I don't lose some of you non-technical yams out there and maybe some of you can even learn a thing or two. Sit down, grab a drink and prepare to learn about the different motorcycle engine configurations. Before we get started though, do yourself a favor, check out our new way of getting entries to our beginner motorcycle giveaway. If you go to yamanoobmerch.com or click the link below every dollar you spend gets you entries to win our motorcycles if you pick up this shirt for example you'll get 28 tickets to win our bike and you'll be entered to win automatically no letter required click the link pick out your favorite merch we've got hats shirts hoodies all kinds of stuff and show your support now let's jump into this one Motorcycle engines all have a few similarities. They produce power that is transferred to the rear wheel by shaft, chain, or belt. They run on a type of fuel, and they are comprised of the same components relative to their fuel type. Gasoline engines consist of an engine block, crankshaft, connecting rod, piston, engine head, valves, and cams. Are you still with me? There's really nothing to it once you start studying. When everything works together, we end up with horsepower and torque, which are the forces that propel you down the street. It's not too complicated, I promise. We're not going to be looking at any of the nitty gritties today like vacuum lines or evap lines, so don't worry. Before we begin, I'll explain the differences between two-stroke and four-stroke engines. The numbers refer to how many operations operations occur in the combustion cycle of an engine. A two-stroke engine has only two operations, combustion and scavenging. The piston in a two-stroke moves to compress the air and fuel in the cylinder in one operation, combustion. And then as the piston cycles downward, both the exhaust gases escape and the fresh air and fuel mixture enter the combustion chamber. Two-strokes are most commonly found on dirt bikes, off-road bikes, or other similar vehicles. They are immensely inefficient with fuel and burn a gas slash oil mixture, which is why you don't see them on road vehicles anymore. However, they can usually make more power with a lower displacement. This is why MotoGP bikes used to be 500cc two-stroke engines, and nowadays they're 1000cc four-stroke engines, but the power per liter is actually similar. A four-stroke engine uses four distinct operations to complete combustion. The air enters the combustion chamber with fuel, known as the intake stroke. The mixture is compressed by the piston rising upward, compression. When the piston reaches its maximum height, the mixture is ignited, combustion, and as the piston falls, the exhaust gases exit, outlet slash exhaust. Most engines found in motorcycles today are of the four-stroke variety and do not require a gas slash oil mixture to run. Gasoline engines are typically typically found in one of seven different configurations. I'm going to mention electric motors at the end because it's still technically a means to power a motorcycle. There are more than seven configurations for these engines, but I'm just going to dive into the ones that are most commonly found on recent production models. So first up, you've got single cylinders. The first engine type is the single cylinder. It's not an inline four, a V8, or even a rotary, even though a couple bikes have featured those. No, a single cylinder engine that does the suck, squish, bang, blow thing cycle all on its own. Although simple in design, the simplest really, Single cylinder engines get a bad rep for being small, mostly used in beginner bikes, dirt bikes, and even the KTM 690 Duke. The lone cylinder's pros are more torque, less moving parts, and ease of maintenance and repairs. The cons are one cylinder does the work, so it's limited power relative to displacement, higher levels of engine vibration, and etc. RPMs are lower on single cylinders as well, with red lines typically in the 9500 to 11,000 RPM range. Single cylinder engines are normally smaller in design and therefore can be found in smaller motorcycles and other forms of transportation. Single cylinder engines are by far the most produced as they are seen in mopeds, dirt bikes, commuter bikes, and even beginner bikes such as the Honda CBR250R. Single cylinder engines are not to be overlooked as reliable sources of power to motorcycles. The KTM Duke 690 is one of the greatest examples of how one single cylinder can be used for such a versatile platform. The bike has been rumored to be one of the easiest to do dank nooners on. Single cylinder engines also get a bad rap for not being the funnest, but anyone out there who's ridden a 500 cc two-stroke single on a dirt bike knows how absolutely insane they can be. Seriously, single cylinders are crazy torquey when they're in lightweight frames. Parallel Twins The next engine type is the Parallel Twin. If you JB welded two cylinders together, this would be it. The Parallel Twin is comprised of inline cylinders utilizing the same engine block and head. The design allows for a more balanced feel, less vibration, and smoother throttle response. 
Since the cylinders fire opposite of each other, the engine is more refined compared to a single cylinder. Splitting the work of a single cylinder to two does have its drawbacks, however. Torque is usually lower in comparison, and while engine redline increases to up to 12,000 RPMs or so. Because of this, engine horsepower can be higher relative to engine displacement. Since the cylinders share the same components, these engines are relatively cheaper to fix and maintain. Since these engines produce less torque, they make excellent beginner bikes for newer riders. The power output is more predictable than some of the other configurations. Some of the most common motorcycles with parallel twins are none other than the Kawasaki Ninja 300 and the Yamaha R3. And one of the best examples of this is the Yamaha FC07 with its cross-plane crank making it an absolute peach of an engine. The inline 4. Forget about all the other ones if you're just looking to see what your squid missile has. The inline 4 is the engine that most resembles an automobile engine. In current form, they have four cylinders and a single engine block. A single crankshaft rotates all four pistons to create both high levels of torque and horsepower, depending on where you rev it. Since the engine has four cylinders, vibrations are minimized. The RPMs can reach 16,000 or higher at redline. The big four manufacturers, Honda, Kawasaki, Suzuki, and Yamaha, use inline fours in their sport bike models of at least 600 cc's and larger. However, in earlier years, they used to make them in all kinds of displacements. The design allows for a very efficient combustion cycle because of the four cylinders. Each cylinder can be found in a different stroke of the cycle, increasing power output and providing maximum engine efficiency. Inline fours are pretty much found on every crotch rocket from Japan and even some from Europe, the BMW S1000RR for example. Parts are plentiful in both factory replacement and the aftermarket since these engines are so common. Finding technicians for maintenance or even working on your own isn't too big of a hassle. Modifications can be performed easily as well. Our favorite Turbo Busa has one. The inline 3. A less common but equally valid and in my opinion excellent engine is the inline 3. As the name suggests, the inline 3 is simply an inline 4 with one cylinder lopped off. This engine has the qualities of a torquey twin but the revs of an inline 4. They're best known for their absolutely creamy mid range punch, linear power, and very iconic trumpet like exhaust sound. Common motorcycles that feature this are Triumph's Street Triple, Daytona, and Speed Triple platforms, and even Yamaha uses an inline 3 in the form of the FC09. Inline 3s typically don't rev out as hard or as fast as inline 4s unless they're tuned for high revs with a short stroke, but the character and the way they develop the power is like nothing else in my opinion. Can you tell I'm a bit of a triple cylinder fanboy? Fun fact, currently the Moto2 motorcycles, the class under MotoGP, races using Triumph's 765cc triple cylinder mill, the V-Twin. If you've ever heard about different engines having different angles, you are probably listening in on the V-Twin. This engine layout is one of the most common and has been used by nearly every motorcycle manufacturer globally at least at one point or another. The V-Twin has opposing cylinders separated at an angle which forms a V. The angle is specific to manufacturers and is known to some as a trademark or a tradition. Harley is known for its 45 degree angle, Husqvarna uses 50 degrees, and Aprilia is known for its 90 degrees setup. V-twins add size to the engine game and can be built in large displacements. Cruisers and touring bikes use V-twins to amass displacements above the leader mark. V-twins are typically smoother running engines and milder in terms of raw performance. Disadvantages of the V-twin are more parts to fix or repair as configuration is nearly two separate engines, a lower RPM and a larger bike because of the engine's size. However, they can be very slim in the saddle. V-twins run on a single crankshaft that row the pistons through the firing order. Most cruisers or touring bikes have the V-twin engine, most notably being Harley-Davidson. For sport bikes, the Aprilia RSV4-1000R is known for having a V-twin, and also the Ducati Panigale 1199. However, they're using V-4s nowadays, which brings us to the V-4. As of recent, manufacturers such as Aprilia and Ducati have been using the V4 engine in some of their models. The engine is basically a double design of the V-twin, or for your car guys, half of a V8. The engine utilizes two of everything to produce power, two heads for two cylinders each, cams, valves, and so on. Because of its design, production is expensive, and maintenance is expensive as well. The engine design touts lower vibrations, a smoother delivery of power, and a balanced firing order of cylinders. Because of the V-design, each cylinder can cancel out the imbalance of another, and this equates to a smoother operation over other designs. Some of the benefits to a V4 is its smaller design allows for tighter installation locations inside smaller or more compact frames. The Ducati Panigale V4 and Aprilia RS V4 use both of these engine designs. Honda, Yamaha, and Suzuki have all used this configuration on at least one of their models. The Boxer engine, the flat twin, and the flat 4-6. 
If you're a fan of Subarus or Porsches, then you'll know about boxer engines. Boxer engines are unique in their designs, which has the pistons firing opposite of each other on a horizontal plane. This design is also known as a flat twin. It's expensive to manufacture and maintain, however. The engine requires two heads just as a V-twin, but allows for a lower center of gravity due to its compact design. As the term twin states, there are two cylinders in this configuration. Depending on its location, this engine can potentially expose its heads, valve cover, or other vital components to damage in the event of an accident drop or crash. This serves as a vulnerability in the design. The BMW R9T is one of the few motorcycles to use the flat twin design. Maybe not deserving of its own distinct categories, the flat 4 slash 6 variations of the flat twin engine do exist. In all technicality, it's based on the same design with either two or four more cylinders. The common bike to use the flat 4 and 6 design is the Honda Goldwing. And that brings us to electric motors slash engines. One thing I should mention is that electric motors are becoming a trend on motorcycles. Much like the three-wheeled abominations, people are using electric-only motors to convert their gasoline engines over and installing batteries on their bikes to do so. Several companies such as Zero Motorcycles are producing electric bikes for purchase. I can understand the thrill of having instant torque, but what about the range of the bike? What about recharging on a longer trip? Electric motors seem great in theory, but the weight of the motor is also a big concern and batteries to store the needed electricity could become cumbersome. An electric motorcycle might be the solution for riders seeking a quiet alternative to gasoline engines and for those needing them for shorter commutes. Engine braking, rev matching, and other fun things to do on gas-powered bikes suddenly become a thing of the past on the electric, but you do get all that juicy torque from way down low from zero RPM. So, how do you feel about the change in technology? Will there be a replacement for the sound of an engine revving to the red line? Let me know in the comments what you think about your favorite engine type and how you feel about electric engines. And don't forget to check out our new merch and get yourself entered to win our giveaway motorcycles. Every dollar you spend equals one entry, so don't miss out on that. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you guys next time. See you later. Fact. The original comic book Superman could leap tall buildings in a single bound, but then he had to come right back down to Earth, because he didn't fly. It wasn't until the 1940s when animators for a new animated series decided it would be too difficult to routinely draw him bending his knees, and it was decided that Superman could take off into the air. Readers got to see a smooth animation and a superhero gained a new power. That was a really long fact. You're welcome. Goodbye.